Look, I'm not going to lie, Rebel. You got a lot of work to do in Walker Assault Mode that the Imperials just don't have to. And if you want to win, it's going to take some smart planning, a lot of coordination, and maybe some last-ditch tow cable skills. There are three sections of the map, each of which Rebels must hold two uplink stations in order to stack up as many Y-Wing bombers as they can. That will then make a gun run on the AT-AT and make it vulnerable to ground fire. Don't think about it. A good chunk of the AT-AT's armor must be taken off at each phase, or Rebels stand little chance of winning. Phase 1. Arm the Uplinks. Uplink stations are the payphones of the Star Wars universe that make very specific collect calls to Y-Wing bombers. It takes a really long time for those calls to go through, so equip the personal shield card and make sure to get your hands on the bubble shield pickup. You need to be able to hold the Uplinks long enough to stack up 4-5 to five Y-Wing bombers per section of the map. That means a lot of standing there and holding them Uplinks or you could push forward and keep Imperial forces away. You can't stop the AT-ATs, however, which rain constant heavy fire and orbital strikes on your head, hence shields. Don't stop to think about how the AT-AT is calling in the orbital strikes when the Rebel Shield Generator is still online. I said don't think! All right, your calls went through. Uber has sent four to five Y-Wings to hit the AT-ATs and make them vulnerable to ground fire. It's now your job to shoot the walkers with everything you can which is actually not a lot. Because of that, it's best if your team can concentrate fire on just one walker at a time. Use your cards or your buddy's cards Ion Shot and Ion Grenade to maximize damage in the short window you have. If your only option is to shoot with your primary rifle, master the Gears of War style reload to keep the blaster bolts coming. Basically hit the right key when the cooldown gets to the yellow bar in the red cooldown meter but that's not nearly going to be enough to stop a walker. Your team will need to have had some foresight and stockpiled smart rockets, anti-vehicle turrets, and orbital strikes. Yep, those Mario Kart coin things you keep grabbing. Hold on to them like they're gold, or whatever passes for gold in the Star Wars universe. Your team will also need to use ground turrets and air assets. And while you're doing all this, you'll be getting shot in the face by stormtroopers, ATSTs, and the walker itself. Basically, just shooting the walker with your primary is never going to cut it. You have to do significant amounts of damage in each of the three map sections. Rinse and repeat three times, and you'll probably lose. Until this gets some rebalancing, at least. But hey, it's a beta, right? Well, all is not entirely lost if you hit the last phase and the walkers have a lot of health. Rebels have one more trick up their sleeves. The Snowspeeders can initiate their tow cable quick time event during the walker's damage phase that can end the four-legged tanks once and for all. So if you get the snow speeder early, steer clear of the battle until the walkers become available, and then swoop in for the save. And less the time runs out, or the QTE crashes you into a mountainside. Hey, good luck, Rebel. We all know you end up losing on Hoth anyway. What are your thoughts on the Star Wars Battlefront beta? Have you played Walker Assault mode? What are your strategies? Let us know in the comments below, and stay tuned to GameSpot.com for more coverage of Star Wars Battlefront.